the honor and pleasure to have uh, Professor Tom Rocca from MIT uh, visiting uh, visiting ICTP for for actually for the first visit for another few days, but then he will be back in August for another couple of weeks. So hopefully you will also have uh, the occasion to ask uh, more questions uh, later, because actually the school which we have in plan for uh, August is actually going to be around the topics that Professor Rocca has mastered over the past uh, 30 years. So topology and geometry, okay, there will be school and conference precisely on this kind of topics. So just, uh, I mean, Tom uh, is one of those mathematicians that really need a very quick introduction, everybody. So he, he has been professor at MIT since uh, 1996. Uh, he has been the recipient of many important prizes, like the Veblen Prize in Geometry, the Dobb Prize for the monograph that he wrote with Peter Kronheimer. He is a member of uh, various academies of science around the world, and uh, I, I'm still affectionate to the fact that all this recognition of prizes come after theorems. And uh, after a little autobiographical, I remember the shock as a graduate student when Tom. Uh, together with Peter Kronheimer proved the Tom conjecture, which is now really, it's one of the most beautiful. Not me, Tom. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it wasn't me, Tom, the Tom of the conjecture. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> there's an age of different, I don't know, maybe there's not even. No, there's an age. <laughs> so there was a Tom conjecture by René Tom, and Tom Rocca and Peter Kronheimer proved it in 1997, 98. And uh, it's one of those theorems that really, for especially when you are a graduate student, give you the, the energy to study even more. It's a beautiful state of Holomorphic curves minimize the genus in CP2 among all embedded surfaces. It's one of those things that you say, wow. And you go back to the library and study more. <laughs> so, okay, it's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure to have him here. It's time to start. So I leave uh, Tom the ground and the title is more deformations on the cohomology of ring of the modular space of representation of the fundamental group of Riemann surface coming from itself. Very well accent. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it's a great pleasure to be here. Carlos, do you want to close your microphone or maybe I close your microphone? Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a great pleasure to be here. Yes, it's beautiful. I see this is amazing. Uh, he's been a friend of mine forever, um, and also particularly this because some of the work will touch. I mentioned some work of Narasimhan and some work of Xavier along the way, so wonderful. Okay, so um, what I want to tell you about is, is joint work with not surprisingly Peter Kronzheimer. That's the point where I tend to forget to say that because I think it's obvious, but you know. Uh oh. It's mm -hmm. stuff being connected. I mean, it's reconnecting. That's the probably when it's reconnecting, I have to share again. We will now move to the classical method of giving a talk. A B mute, he said, right? A mute and the top four. No. Oops, but I have to do it. So patience. Okay. 
So, <laughs> right, so what I want to tell you about, um, I mean, I'm going to start a little bit easy, but uh, um, so, uh, okay, let me tell you the goal, and then I will, the goal is not so easy. Then I will step back from the goal and see what okay. So the goal is I can compute is the cosmology that is. One times S two N. So, I want to start unpacking this, and it'll take most of the lecture to unpack this statement, and then hopefully I'll be able to tell you a bit more about computation. Okay, first of all, uh, this S to N is. Um, all the points and and cone angle two. Um, so as an orbital. It's fine. It's, this will be great. It'll be slower. <laughs> Everybody will be happy. Um, so, as an orbifold, it, it has a fundamental group. And so the cone angle pi over two, uh, what that means, uh, we're going to look at pick a base point here because we're good kids and we always pick base points. Uh, and then we look at oops, uh, uh, sphere. Um, if it were just the two sphere, then of course the fundamental will, will be trivial. But um, there's a penalty for trying to slide across the orbifold points. And the penalty is that, um, well, cone angle is pi over two. So that means that uh, if you go around once, that's not contractible twice, no, three times, no, but four times, it's contractible. Right? If cone angle were Pi, you could go around twice, that would be contractible. Um, so the fundamental group is generated by n loops. N, and they satisfy uh, the relation that gamma i, gamma i to the fourth is one, and also with the product. Okay, uh, and what we're going to want to do is study representations of this group into SU2. Um, all representations. Oh, I'm a Let's move it to SU2. So concretely, just a bunch of matrices in SU2 satisfying that their fourth powers are all one and that the product is one. But we're going to require that um, that gamma i is is um, its fourth power is one, but its square is not one. So uh, we want gamma i one, but Gamma I squared. Uh, so, in other words, 
it's, it's easy to describe what set of the matrices that satisfy this equation. Uh, I can think of SV2 sitting inside the, the unit, sitting inside the quaternions. as the unit sphere. And the set in this description of SU2, the set of elements of order exactly four is this is one, this is minus one in the sphere. There's this uh, two sphere, which is the uh, which is the unit sphere. of the imaginary quaternions. So if you think a quaternion that's purely imaginary, it squares minus its length. So um, these guys will all have square, will have square minus one, so it's the fourth power is one. So uh, in these terms, uh, this, is equal to matrices A1 up to An in S2. Uh, this particular S2, let's say S2 in H. S2I, sure. S2I uh, so that the product is one. That's it. Rather innocuous thing. Um, now we're going to want to look actually at conjugacy classes of representations. So conjugated by elements of S2. What that means concretely over here is that we're looking at this, this set of points on the two sphere up to rotations of the two sphere. So now we have a kind of a nice picture of. Uh, One of the main players in, in the story. <clears throat> so we're going to call this Rn. <clears throat> and uh, it's just a bunch of points and points. from this equation, we're asking that this product of points is the point one in the three sphere. So that's three equations fixing the point on the three sphere. And another three comes from the fact that SO3 is acting on this. So that's the dimension. And of course, there's a lot to, there's standard de de details to check to see that that uh, heuristic gives you the correct dimension. But, um, and let's look at this a little further. So n is one. So say empty. Uh, um, that's just asking for something on a two sphere that's equal to one. That's perfect. So 
what about R3? Well, um, what you can uh, check pretty easily is that in R3, uh, this triple has to be conjugate to I, J, and minus K. So the product of the three, um, the product of the three standard imaginary quaternions is minus one. So if I put the sign of one of them, uh, one, and you can you can check easily that up to conjugacy this is the moment solution. So this is a point. R five. So the dimension the dimension is formula, and in fact. Um, Dimension, what is it? So, the dimension, it's one is, is, is minus four, it's empty, when n is three, it's zero, it's a point, when n is five, um, its dimension is four, and it's actually uh, CP2 blown up at five points. As, as you go on, um, well, the dimension goes by this formula. But, um, so um, it goes up by four every time, et cetera. And um, what you get here are um, you know, this, if you're an algebraic geometry, you immediately recognize this is a final manifold. And in fact, all of these guys are the underlying smooth manifold is an interesting family of final manifolds. They have, um, uh, they have B, B, sorry, B2, B, N plus two, N plus one. So this is, uh, N plus five here, B2 is six, that pattern repeats. Um, from manifolds. Anyway, um, but just to, <laughs> so um, natural question to ask if you're a topologist, then is the cohomology of this, say, with rational coefficients. So there's a long story about computing with this cohomology or whatever. Um, that one we could do. That one I told you what it is, so now you can do it. Well, what about the rest? Um, so um, there's an analogous story that one can do for, uh, you know, forget about all the whole points um, and just look at uh, neuron surfaces of higher genus um, and um, so I have to say the is it, <coughs> um, there's so many people that have contributed to this area it will not take the rest of the board to write down their, their names um, but uh, people that have been involved in this are, well, there's, first of all, there's um, Narasimhan Sashadvi, um, Narasimhan Mehta did this, thought about this case, I mean, as a, in the context of algebraic geometry, then Don Sagi, Sifrin Khan, Baranowski, uh, King Newstead, Thaddeus, Kirwan, uh, Keen. I'm forgetting other people, but a lot of people have contributed to understanding this. Uh, that's mostly in the, most of those people worked in the case of low orbital points in higher genus. Uh, 
Hans Bowden, uh, Alk, Kirk, and Eric Klassen, and uh, uh, Ethan Street, whose name is going to come up a lot, uh, who have done this case and, and related wonderful things. Uh, okay, so let me um, explain that at least computing the rank of this particular group is actually surprisingly straightforward, completely elementary, in fact. Well, yeah, you know, elementary is always in the eye of the holder. But um, you can argue uh, via Morse theory to think about this. And the idea is the following. So we've got our points. And let's uh, look at the last two. And um, good kids. So we take the base point, we take this loop that goes around the last two, and then we take the uh, trace of the image of the representation around this loop. So another, so concretely, Equivalence class with a bunch of matrices. So super concrete, it's just the it's just the trace of the product of the last two matrices. Okay. Um, now this is this product, these were in the two sphere, but the product's in SU2. So the trace is actually in the interval minus two two. And um, um, so here's a n minus one, here's a n. Up to conjugacy, I can assume that this is equivalent to i, and the same conjugacy, uh, this guy is going to be cosine i plus j uh, plus sine, so cos sine. sine theta j. Um, and so uh, you see that the, the trace of x1 a n is that's just going to pick up this cosine factor with a factor of minus two minus two cosine theta. And so um, you see that what happens when you at uh, the maxima and minima are achieved when these guys are orthogonal. And, but what happens when you have that? That means that um, the product, uh, remember we had the product of these matrices, of all the matrices is one. So, um, um, of the first n minus two of these guys is equal to plus or minus con because um, the product of uh, sorry plus or minus one. So in other words, the maxima and minima are copies of, so when the product is one, for sure, that's a copy of Rn minus two, right? But actually when the product is minus one, well, I can just, because this, these are all, this is, there's an odd number of these guys, I can switch the sign of all of them. So that's an, also a copy of Rn minus two. So F inverse of minus two is equivalent to F inverse of two is, minus two. Um, the other thing to notice is that there exists a connection on the rest. So th this is a, um, 
So what, uh, this is this argument appeared in some papers of Thaddeus and a paper of, of Kirk and Classics in different contexts. But anyway, there's a circle action here. Where does that come from? So um, if you're in this interval, then a n minus one, let's fix it to the optochondric is here, can fix it to the i. Um, I can fix um, a n a n. That's going to be non trivially, you know, both these are going to be non, that's oh, right, this is going to be non zero. Um, and and um, now what you see, um, it, so then I have some other points. Right. Now, um, without changing the trace, I can rotate around the k-axis. Right. Um, and that that induces an action on. Um, this is an action on, on the, the modulized space. Um, its fixed points are e easy to see. The fixed points are when all of the points are either plus or minus k. I mean, no, you know, you get to pick the plus and minus signs, but we're going to rotate around the k axis. And the fixed points of that action are, are where all the points apply. The sort of north and south pole in the k direction, right? So there, there are two n minus one fixed points, and this fits into a kind of general story. Actually, this action is up to scale. In fact, if I take cosine inverse of f, that explains why it's open. Well, cosine inverse of f is actually um, for a sort of natural symplectic form. Uh, on this manifold um, cosine inverse of f is a Hamiltonian that generates the circle action. And it's a sort of general fact in the story that, um, that then, in that case, um, the critical points of the function are the fixed points of the circle action. The fixed points, of the, the critical points all have even index. This goes back to the idea of Frankel. Um, anyway, um, this is all to say that there's an e easy inductive formula there for these dimensions. Which, um, and in fact, for, for the Poincare polynomial, Oh, no, yeah. Using that because I make dumb mistakes. This isn't quite true. It's actually um, it, it's a two sphere bundle over the sky because um, I actually get to pick. I, I had to do some conjugation. Or that's the range of the conjugation. So um, in any case, there's an inductive. Formula for the three polynomial, which is this. So in a second, That's the inductive formula. This, so the maximum and minima, uh, two sphere bundles over Rn minus two. So this is the Poincare polynomial for Rn minus two. That's the Poincare polynomial for the two sphere from the minimum. This comes from the maximum. So it gets a, a, a boost from uh, the co index. That's the contribution. And I'll get at this. Okay. 
this, you can use the, I mean, compute all the many numbers, but in particular, the convention of this guy is, uh, it, it's, it's So, um, anyway, so that's uh, elementary, as it were. Uh, but now, if we really want to understand the cohomology ring, and um, uh, to, to do that, first, first thing we want to do is understand that there are natural cohomology classes on, on the space that generators for the ring. And um, for that purpose, think of this the geometric origin of these guys. And uh, essentially what happens, uh, I don't know where I want online, but um, there's, well, let's say uh, so the R3 bundle, uh, natural R3 bundle over uh, this guy, which comes from like, a representation of the fundamental group, and that gives me a flat bundle um, over the two sphere. So the fiber over a point here is the flat bundle. Think of this as an R3 bundle. Um, and so I can take uh, the Pontryagin class of this universal bundle. Um, and, uh, my convention to take minus a quarter of this guy and look at its Kunnit components. So there's going to be a class that's a multiple of the volume of the uh, volume form of the sphere uh, and alpha, and then more uh, four forms. So alpha is in page two of this guy, and beta is in page four. And uh, what do I don't want to say. Yeah, right. Now, but there's some other interesting cohomology classes uh, coming from each of the orbifold points. Uh, and each of the orbifold points, um, this R3 bundle, okay. so there's away from the orbifold points, there's an honest R3 bundle. Um, at the orbifold point, um, this action uh, decomposes this R3 into a line and a complementary two plane. That two plane still has a residual action on it, but there's a, there's, once I take the quotient, there's uh, a line bundle uh, Li, this is point I. oriented R2 bundle sitting uh, uh, about above each point. And so um, I'm going to have classes which are minus the quarter class of L9. Uh, these are just line bundles over the bundle space, not over the pair. Uh, so um, now you can check that these guys square all square to the same thing uh, because it works. Um, and so there's a, a, a natural algebra that acts uh, uh, on the natural ring that acts Uh, just the ring generated by these guys and restrict those guys to the to the uh, to the surface, the moduli space. Um, and this is the algebra generated by these guys mod the relation with the delta i squared a squared. So, um, so 
that you can prove is that a large ring of this guy. Cyclic um, module over a n. Um, so, in particular, so some cyclic generator. This guy, everything is a multiple. Everything here is a multiple of algebra elements generator um, and there's some projected map and there's some magical kernel and that's the thing that you want to get your hands on. Understand the kernel of this map. So um, so I think it, it was Mumford that observed a, a natural guess as to what the kernel Buffer relations. And that, that goes by um, um, observing, well, it appeals to our symptom theta, which is a marginalized space. There are all the bundles. Two under convention with parabolic weights. Equal so that quarter you should think of the same quarter as that the orbital sphere. So uh, now, what's a, what's a parabolic bundle? It's, in this case, what that means is I still have the same end points, but now I have a holomorphic rank two vector bundle over this guy. And at each point, At each point, I fix a, a line in the fiber. I and um, then uh, So I've got this homomorphic bundle, and I want to kind of understand stability. Stable. Important word at the moment. Stable parabolic bundles. So I want to um, understand, in some sense, how rigid this data is. The way I'm going to measure it is I'm going to probe this pair of data. So this E drive by double track. And I'm going to probe it by mapping in a line bundle. And um, when I map in a line bundle, let's assume the map is, is injected everywhere. Um, it's not terribly important, but if it's injected everywhere, um, Sorry, let's assume it's injected at these two points. Um, then I can ask um, is the image equal to the given line at the point or not? Okay. And then um, so um, I'll take this back. F is a supplement. So, 
be varying degree of y bundle. I mean, we have a two sphere, so this is just this is just all of n times some point or some n. The degree, degree, and then. Uh, Right. And then I'm going to look at minus one to the degree of, sorry, minus one to the dimension of n. So, um, so the, to the parabolic degree, I get a, a line that will have background degree, and it gets a bonus um, if, so notice the way the signs work out, it gets a bonus if it hits the line, and it gets a penalty. If it misses the line, that's that's the way it works. And then this guy's stable. The wrong degree of that um, is less than a half. Okay. Um, So the the, um, the Mufford relations are um, so um, so sorry. I told you what stability is now, and and this theorem of Narasimhan method identifies this moduli this space representation with the moduli space of stable parabolic bundles. So we have all these. You can think of these guys as these interesting holomorphic bundles. And the thing to take away from the stability condition is that some um, uh, some kinds of data are not allowed to live inside our bundle. And what that means is we can construct a constraint that um, a cohomology class that is always vanishing on the the moduli space. So when I think about um, well, yeah, in interest of time, I mean, it, if if it weren't for the parabolic thing, just say, um, If I weren't thinking about parabolic bundles, now we forget about this. That's still the notion of stability for rank two bundles. Um, this, what we're saying is that if this condition is violated, if the degree is too big, um, then this is zero. And that would imply that H1 is a vector bundle. Right. Um, now, here we're there's an extra condition um, that we need to hit. Sorry. Yeah. I thought it was going to be as fast. And now. <laughs> it's way, way slower. Anyway, um, let me. Uh, let me just say this, say it this way for the moment. Um, using stability. Uh, vector bundle and over 
R N number N. Uh, um, and um, we can compute the term class of this guy using Riemann Roth. Compute its term classes And um, any term class above the dimension is zero. Those are the relations. So, uh, I mean, it's an interesting story in all of these cases to work out the combinatorics of exactly which guys appear. Um, you have to look at uh, a destabilizing line bundle, line bundles that violate this condition. So, there's a lot of those. Um, each of those gives you a relation. It's interesting to see what the minimal set of relations, et cetera, is. That's a well worked out story. Um, um, but let me say one interesting thing about that in this case. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so that is inside E. Uh, and so um, but each F I get uh, an eta subset of one through N, which is eta is a set of hits. So F PI equal to that guy. And then um, it turns out that the first relation start in dimension M. Sorry. Um, and um, there's a, actually a nice formula for these guys. Which depends on, on this eta. So if, if that's a sort of minimally actually destabilizing. Then uh, CM of this vector uh, bundle, which depends on the degree of F and eta instead of its, is one over M factorial, is the product of B eta minus J is equal to one of J. I think this one is actually new. I mean, it's like, you know, Zagate has a beautiful generating function for these guys, but I don't think you noticed that. I don't know. Um, here's another formula.
So um, what's happening in this formula? Um, to some combinatorial factor, there's some polynomial of homo homogeneous polynomial of degree j in these guys. Um, I mean, cohomological degree j. Um, and then this is the symmetric function in m minus j, sorry, m minus j symmetric function in n variables. So the variables are put in the deltas with a sign according to whether it's a hit or miss. So nice concrete formula. And um, these are. And satisfy a recursion relation, which is the recursion relation that I learned about from Stephen and John's paper. Many other people discovered it at the same time. Um, so I have satisfied this recursion relation, which is formally put in uh, data equals one, and look at this sequence of polynomials. Uh, it turns out that these are orthogonal polynomials. Sense classical sense for five polynomials with respect to the uh, the measure vectors in the Euler sequence, so the, the coefficients of sense essentially. Um, and um, okay, now in the next two minutes, I'll tell you the rest of my talking words. Um, so great, um, it turns out so. So this particular case, it's, it's due to Ethan Street, but it follows work of, of so Ken Sieber, et cetera, et cetera, uh, um, in the higher case without point of the genus, that actually these generate the ideal of relations. Okay. So take, take, you know, take M, which is with the N by two plus two plus one. Um, I vary eta, that's the choice. As I vary eta, that gives me a bunch of cohomology classes of degree f, and those cohomology classes generate the idea of relations. Um, now, the interesting thing, so that's great. That's sort of, um, what Ethan Street did was ask himself, the analogous, so analogous straight for for instanton homology, whatever that is. But instanton homology provides an interesting way of, um, of deforming these relations. So it turns out um, that um, <coughs> so this instanton homology is sort of, in this case, I think maybe it's still conjecturally, but in the case of higher genus, it's also the same as the quantum cohomology of the representation variety. So there's a, a deformation of, of the cohomology that can provide it that way. And um, the way people had, the way people street computed these things, computed the deformation was quite difficult. Um, and Peter and I wanted to compute something even harder, which is to it turns out that the space of connections when you do instanton for homology has non trivial fundamental group. And so you can look at local coefficients, so cohomology of local coefficients. And we wanted to compute for our own nefarious purposes that those cohomology groups with local coefficients. And it, now we can do it. And um, what I mean, the interesting thing is that um, you know, once you, the, what, one of the things that becomes very interesting when you start doing local coefficients is that for the cohomology was just uh, a Z module, but now when you do local coefficients, it, it becomes uh, a module over a one polynomial ring. So now it, it has suddenly a, a lot more structure and it gives you, in this case, a family of interesting algebraic curves, which seem super cool in 
makes the um, fair homology, you know, then, I mean, this is fair homology in the context of knots, it makes um, uh, the, so there's this, the, for this product case, it gives you an interesting curve. If you have a two sphere embedded in your three manifold hitting the knot in a certain way, that the formology of that knot becomes a module of that curve. So some interesting kind of vector bundle over the curve. And anyway, a lot of interesting things to do, but that's for some other time. <laughs> so stop that. Yeah. Good. Yes. yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions or so on oops, on some line, of course, if you want to ask. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was all history. But uh, I hope uh, it's interesting history anyway. There's even more history. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have a very naive question. But for example, if you retranslate uh, some of this formula, or some interpretation of the, the homology, even in the examples that you I mean, you told us uh, for n equal to three, this was CP two blown up at uh, five points. Have we have we learned have we learned something about CP two blown up at five points? Well, you know, I think um, yeah, I don't know if if the I, mean, I don't know the literature, I don't know the quantum cohomology literature. Well, I don't know if people have computed the quantum cohomology bubbles, you know, quantum analogs that arrive, probably. I don't know. Um, I, um, I don't know if they think about the, the extra deformation that you get from passing through local coefficients. Maybe an expert could tell me that. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we, you know, we learned a lot of interesting things in, in the process of doing this. In fact, um, I, I like to, uh, we started thinking about this a couple of years ago. You know, this is one of our, this is the COVID project. And I, I've, I've come to describe it as the white whale. <laughs> you know, which is conveniently, um, th this instance of the white whale is an orbital two sphere, the teeth, you know, <laughs> with 23 orbital points. Um, and um, you know, when we first we first tried to think about it, in the you know, first we we were really happy when we did it for five points where it was CP two blown up at five points, and that was essentially by figuring out the quantum cohomology, which was somehow not, not so hard. And then we decided that yeah, that we should use gauge theory, and then you know <laughs> um, we had we like. Looked at the papers that people had written, you know, I was in particular written to people and tried to find, you know, something. It, everything was just, you know, sort of barely doable without local coefficients. It all seemed very hard. And then we noticed a lot of, at some point, we noticed that it actually it's less complicated than people think. And we can just do it. And we did it. And now that we have program that can, you know, I mean, these things, you know, the, the, the rank goes quite fast. So it, it's hard computation eventually anyway, but we can do it up to 17, 19 points without any, any trouble. I don't know if we can actually do it in big way. Although probably if we don't do it on our laptop and somewhere else, we can do it. Um, anyway, so. Um, other questions? Yeah. So you you will think you always have the case where you have these all two points with order four. Right? Yeah. So is there a particular reason that's what you can do? Well, or in principle, you know, you, you know, it, I mean, you know, the thing is that I mean, I you know, if you had asked me like three months ago, I would have said it's just too hard. I mean, too hard for us, you know. But now I don't know. I mean, one of the things that you know, that if, so. From the point of view of the instanton homology, the reason that that's 
a nice restriction is because that's the analog that that's the situation in which the floor homology construction is the analog of monotone the symplectic floor homology it's a monotone in the sense that the symplectic form is a multiple mm -hmm. of the first term class of the complex structure in 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 isotope floor homology there's a very direct analog to that which is that there's there's the churn simons function that you're using to define the floor homology the morphology of the term function. But the term sinus function is a circle valued function. So you, you in a circle valued function, you actually get a homomorphism from the fundamental group of your space into the integers. Uh, on the other hand, there's another, that, that's kind of sloppy. That's the thing that depends on the, on the common angle. So turn Simons as a function on the space, the space doesn't change too much, it changes a bit, but the, the, the transcendence function kind of moves as a homology, as a, as a map to Z. The other thing which is more rigid is, is the spectral flow of the Hessian of the sky. So it's a, which is exactly analogous to in the, in the in symplectic floor homology to what's going on. Okay, so when those guys line up, it's much easier they don't, well then, it, you know, I mean, now of course nobody's bothered by using no cuff rings. So you can, you can do it and it, it'd be interesting to see if you could do it. No, because uh, I mean, normally one in this context, you know, in the parabolic case, you would also uh, kind of change the parabolic structure and then look at walk crossing and things like that. But then maybe I don't know whether that makes sense in your context. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. It, 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 I mean, it's a, a delicate thing to to do, but it, it makes sense to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, somehow, and, you know, we, we at, at this point, we're extremely happy with how easy no, it is. I, mean, I, I didn't tell you anything about how easy, what made it easy, but mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. another question. Okay, so before thanking Tom again, it's our tradition now to all the old guys leave the room. And uh, we leave uh, Tom uh, with, uh, <laughs> with uh, our diploma, PhD students, to have a little uh, private chat. Okay? And we all wait on the terrace. Uh, once we're done, uh, we are happy to offer everybody a little refreshment. Okay? So thank you very much, Tom. Sure. Everybody. Oh, and then of course, that part, part of, of this part of the conversation will not be recorded. I hope, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. If I think I, I, I don't know, maybe in any case, I, I haven't seen it, so we'll never use it against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.